My name is Clara Bird Taylor. I'm the oldest sister of James Bird. This is my sister, LaVon Harris. She's the younger sister of James Bird. And this is my daughter, Tiffany Holmes, who's a niece. We want to read a brief statement from the family. Today, we witnessed the peaceful and dignified execution of John King for the savage, brutal, and inhumane murder of James on June 7, 1998. Really a modern day lynching. King, who was the ringleader of the three, had a deeply ingrained hatred of blacks as evidenced by his actions, his tattoos, and hate-filled rhetoric. He wanted to make a name for himself and his organization by killing a black man. James was chosen as his target. James was shown no mercy as he was dragged while still alive behind a pickup truck using a 25-foot logging chain. His body was slung from side to side like a sack of potatoes until he was decapitated. King showed no remorse then and showed no remorse tonight. His execution tonight was just punishment for his actions. The outcry of support from around the world indicated that James' death made a difference, not just to us, but to people around the world. We are very grateful to the judicial system for their full support. The local, state, and federal government all worked together to get a speedy arrest trial and conviction of all three perpetrators. Tonight, after almost 21 years on death row, the death sentence was finally carried out. James would have been 70 this year. He was deprived of the precious, precious, precious memory of watching his three children grow up to be productive citizens. He has four grandchildren and his older granddaughters will soon finish college. James' legacy continues to be one of peace and, and uh, nonviolence. As a result of his death, laws have been changed to recognize hate crimes and to punish accordingly. But laws cannot change the heart of man. We look to God to bring about a permanent solution. But meanwhile, we encourage each one of everyone to reach out to those of another ethnic group and get to know them on a personal level. Because when we have open dialogue, it helps overcome racial prejudice. If we don't overcome racial prejudice, it leads to racial hatred and acts of violence, which is why we're here tonight. That's it. Questions? He never looked at you. He never looked at any of the witnesses. No. Is that disappointing to you? Or how disappointing is that? I think to the very end, he showed his attitude towards James and the family. He didn't look at us. He showed no sign of remorse. He just laid there with his eyes closed the entire time. It's all like an act of defiance. Why did you feel the need to forgive him? Forgiveness is a word that's used differently by some people. When we say forgive, we're thinking about letting go of resentment that paralyzes you. But as far as accepting what he's done, no, we have not done that. But we don't spend each and every one day of our life hating and feel with bitterness. We choose to move on in a positive way. Sarah, that makes sense. Do you remember when uh, when he was convicted and he walked out and he was given the chance to say something to y'all and he uh -huh. said an atrocious statement, an right. offensive statement. Your thoughts on that and to the very end right now where he seemed to, with his eyes closed the entire time. Ignored us. Like he was asleep. And then when given the chance of nothing at all, from, from that moment to this time that you've seen that he has not in any way tried to reach out to you. What are your thoughts? None whatsoever. No remorse was shown then. It's indicative of how embedded his hate was and how proud he was of what he had what he had done. No remorse whatsoever. How did it feel for you that at no point and he looked like he was asleep the entire time compared yeah. to what your brother went through? That's difficult to answer. Because I don't want to go down the road of Jane's brutal death because that brings back too many too many painful memories. But it was very, very savage. I prefer not to reflect on the on those that right now. But compared to the way James died, his his death was very peaceful and dignified. Claire, does this give you, you closure tonight? 
where do you move on from here? Closure is a word that's difficult to define for many people. It's like a wound that you've had that's healed, but the scar always remains. So the scar of James death will always be on us, but it's not paralyzing us. We're moving forward with our activities and the things that the foundation is doing to bring about better conditions. How did you feel sitting in that room and then knowing he was pronounced dead? Did you get a sense of closure? Can I be honest? I felt nothing. <laughs> there was no sense of relief, no sense. I was just happy that this month was over with. And that that part of this, um, what word do you use to call it, this uh, challenge was over. Now we can move on to the next stage. What message would you directly have for the community of Jasper tonight that had to I think if you continue to embrace diversity, no matter where you are, it's going to help solve the problem. But it needs to start in, in the elementary school kids, that is, setting up programs and resources to help people to deal with their, their prejudices towards others of a different race, and not creating a climate or environment in which hate is allowed to flourish. He said nothing to you, and well, what would you have said to him if he had listened? I don't think you want to hear that, so I don't think I want to come in on that one. <laughs> no. Clara, how did it feel to walk in and see him there? I looked at him laying there peacefully, as if he was already asleep, as if he was just... No, during the trial, he showed no interest in the trial. He seemed to have shown no interest in him being strapped to a gurney and dying. He said you know, he was kind of bored during the trial, just disinterested. Same attitude tonight to me. Is this, is this justice? Justice? Yes. Did, yes. His written statement there, when he seems to allege like he was killed because of no lack, basically a poor man dies, it's the capital punishment, you know, uh, capital punishment, punishment to those without capital to that sense. How does that make you feel when you consider you are in a rich family, James Bird wasn't a rich man, and then him using that as a crutch or a defense? I'm not sure I understand the question, Angel. I'm sorry. Basically, just from his final statement saying, which was a bit confusing, uh, saying that it was a uh, uh, capital punishment. Um, Jeremy, was a capital punishment, punishment? Uh, I, didn't know, I didn't know he made a final statement. We hadn't heard that, so I can't comment on it. A written statement. I, did, I, I haven't seen it, haven't heard it. Sorry, can't comment yeah, no, no, on that. I had no idea at all. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Janice?